morning, everyone. Everyone have a good time last night? Enjoy it? Good. Who went on the hike? Who woke up at impressive? And you guys all made it back, so better than I did. Um, thank you for uh, coming again. Uh, I've been to seven zeitgeists now, and the most valuable part of this experience for me is really bumping into some of the most fascinating people in technology in business today. Um, for example, yesterday I found myself at lunch, true story, uh, with uh, Professor Seligman, who gave that wonderful talk on flourishing. And along comes Noriel Rubini. And uh, you know, if, if you're in a good mood, and you're happy, and you see Noriel coming your way, then turn the other way. Uh, anyway, Professor Seligman and Noriel get into a little discussion about the future of the world, uh, the future of mankind, whether we're going to destroy ourselves. And uh, Professor Seligman, of course, being the optimist, says, you know, I think everything's going to be OK. Professor Rubini comes back with 15 reasons why it's not going to be OK, <laughs> and we're all doomed. So I'm sitting there, it's like watching a tennis match. I'm happy, and then I'm sad. I'm happy, and then I'm sad. So anyway, this goes on for some time, and they start getting a little argumentative. I'm, I'm looking around for Sebastian Younger and his Viking helmet to, to calm the calm the storm. But it all worked out. And that's the kind of thing that can only happen at Zeitgeist. That's why we do this event. Uh, today we have a program lined up that I think is really powerful. We have some great leaders in the room. And what always fascinates me is what motivates some of these people. What, why did they take the decisions that they did? And why did they uh, take the actions that they did? So what I'd encourage all of us to do is to try to put yourselves in the shoes of the people who are up here on stage. Uh, try to experience life the way they did. Uh, as an example, imagine that you return home from this conference and you find that your government uh, has confiscated your land. There's 300 impoverished farmers now living in your front yard. Right? What would you do? What action would you take? Would you resort to violence or force to remove them? You're going to hear from a fellow named Alberto Valmez from Venezuela. Uh, his family's been in Venezuela for 100 years. Uh, he, his family runs a uh, rum company there. And the way he reacted in that situation uh, is just extraordinary. Uh, or suppose you believe fervently in a single Islamic, Islamic state, right? somewhat of a radical view. Uh, you travel to Egypt. You're studying. You're imprisoned there. You're tortured for four years. Right? How is that going to change your worldview? Do you become more radical in your beliefs, or do you completely change your outlook? You're going to hear from Majid, who's going to talk about his experiences. Imagine you grew up dirt poor in the Bronx. Thanks to your mother, thanks to hard work, you get an education. You come back, you want to make a difference. You see a lot of programs that are making a difference. But you don't see anything really addressing all the root problems, all the problems that are present in that kind of an environment. So what do you do? What makes you feel like you can make a difference when so many others haven't? So you're going to hear from Jeffrey Canada, who started an organization called Harlem's Children's Zone that's improving thousands of children's lives one block at a time. Now finally, we're going to go a little bit off menu. Try to put yourself in this situation. You're in the eighth day of a 2,000-mile bicycle race. The world's best cyclists are gunning for you. You fall. You skid across the pavement. You're bruised. You're hurt. Why do you get up? What motivates you? You've already won this thing seven times. Why do you do it? So we're going to hear from Lance Armstrong uh, a little later on today about what motivated him. So I'm really excited about hearing from some of these leaders. We have a lot of other folks uh, who I think are going to be fascinating. And hopefully you'll leave here inspired by some of the people around you. In addition to all these sessions, um, we're going to have some, do something a little bit different. How many of you been, have been to an unconference? An unconference, a couple people. So the idea in an unconference is there is no agenda, and anybody can speak about what they want. So we have 15 intrepid volunteers from this audience who have agreed to come up here and speak for five minutes on a topic of their choice. If you're going to speak, can you raise your hand? People? A couple people? All right. Well, I don't know where the others are. They're still hiking, I guess. But hopefully, maybe they're not going to show up. And I'm going to have to stand up here for five minutes. I don't know. But we have some presentations on vaccinations, on music theory. It should be very interesting. I think some are going to be great. And some are going to be 
uh, memorable. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right, so before we get started, this is a special audience. Um, as uh, the person who's leading the Americas from the business side for Google, I want to thank you for coming, and I want to thank you for your business. It's a tradition of ours to give a little gift uh, at this event, and I think this year we've, we've got something pretty special. How many of you have heard of Google TV? Heard of Google TV? Everybody's, most people have heard of Google TV, right? So Google TV is a service that allows you to search over all of your content, your DVR, uh, Netflix, anything that's on your uh, cable uh, provider. And um, now how many of you have actually tried Google TV? All right, so that's a problem, <laughs> right? We like to solve problems. So how many would like to try Google TV? All right, so let's solve that problem. What do you think? All right, so thanks to our friends at Sony and Best Buy uh, and the Geek Squad and Dish, we're going to provide everybody in the audience with a Google TV experience. You're going to get a Sony Blu-ray uh, DVD player a, uh, that's programmed with Google TV. It's going to be installed by the Geek Squad experts in your home. Uh, you're also going to get a Dish DVR and three months of service. Uh, all included in that package, also installed. So that's our thanks to you. Thank you. So please thank our partners at uh, Best Buy, at Sony, and at Dish, uh, and at the Geek Squad. And I uh, hope you enjoy your Google TV. Um, I don't have a very hard job. So <laughs> to start us off today, I want to introduce Jared Cohen. Jared's a Rhodes Scholar. Uh, he's an author. He's one of the youngest members of the State Department. He served under both Secretary of State Rice and Secretary of State Clinton. Um, he spent uh, quite a few years in the Middle East. He actually, he was telling me earlier, he actually uh, has been in a, a, basically a terrorist camp to see how they train uh, members of Al-Qaeda. And he is just joining Google, I think this week or next week, as the director of Google Ideas. So please welcome Jared. <laughs> 